suspension of his license was probably because he as a doctor knows that it's not a deliberate move by the government not to employ these people. They wouldn't deliberately not give jobs to people, especially doctors. Doctors are needed everywhere. So this was just probably an error in the system which is going to be fixed. But as it is, the suspension was given because he of all people knows that this isn't a deliberate move, but he went ahead and prompted the protest. Yes, everyone has a right to a voice. Everyone has a right to protest. They have a right to protest. We have the right to hear their voice. But him joining the move while knowing exactly what's happening in the system was uncalled for. Was the police necessary at the protest? We saw that there was quite heavy police uh, presence at, at the protest. Was it necessary? Um, the Constitution talks about unlawful assembly. This is a gathering which isn't permitted by the police. So those protesters, those people who are protesting, by virtue, the police are supposed to be present in a situation that violence arises. Mm. All right. And, and obviously, it was, it was a peaceful protest. Yes. And, and, and the police did not act. <coughs> All right. Anyway, your, your time is up. <coughs> Let me get quickly to um, Mr. Mbao Edward, who is the MMD, New Hope MMD, Lusaka District IPS. What is your reaction with the doctors protesting? Thank you so much. Uh, it is really a very sad development. We are not talking about the law <coughs> integrity people here. We are talking about the almost, I would say, the highly, you know, educated people in the society who understands what peace means. They understand what violence means. And um, for them to put up a protest, I'll begin by saying that this protest did not just, you know, like happen as a volcano. Uh, yes, I would say it has happened like a volcano because there's been a lot of dialogue happening for the past it's a decade now, it's about 10 years. They've been trying to negotiate, to come to table with the government of the day, and of which their request hasn't been put you know, to consideration. So as a team, these people are not working as individuals. They're working as a team. <coughs> and I believe they have always considered the fact that there is a law to observe in this nation. And from the way they've been doing things, it's a shameful thing to see to it that uh, we could even see the, the, the security officers, you know, in, in, in such, you know, situations. I will quickly uh, uh, remind you or take you back to what was happening in the Copper Belt recently, is it over the weekend, where youths of the PF, you know, they, 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 they stormed the, 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 one of the towns in the Copper Belt, moving and making other shops close. What kind of unlawful assembly are they talking about? Is that lawful for them to actually move and march from one place to the other, even making business to come to a standstill? Of course, I, I wouldn't actually conquer to that. And then if you talk about uh, doctors protesting for lack of employment, I wouldn't agree when somebody says there are no employment, there, is no, there, is no, there are no jobs. How would you say there are no jobs when you walk into a health facility? You find manpower, you know, you find that maybe there are just two trained doctors, qualified doctors. And then people are protesting for something that is actually good for, 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 for the Zambians. I mean, the poor Zambian in Shangombo doesn't have a doctor. The only person who can attend to their serious cases are nurses. And nurses actually are limited in attending to issues. Certain issues are very specific. They need specialized you well, know, personal. Well, um, the, the representative uh, obviously has mentioned, the one on, on your panel says, you know, the, 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 the matter will be dealt with internally, and it's, it's something that they are working on currently. From, from the time the PF came into power, it's about negotiations and negotiations after negotiations. There are no results. I mean, there is a need for every negotiation that after having it, there should be a result by responding to the needs or cries of the people. Each and every moment I've seen every protest by any group in our nation, it has been considered to be unlawful. When are we going to have lawful protests in our nation? Are you in agreement that for sure all the protests are unlawful? Of course not, because these people are not people who are illiterate. They are not after violence. They know what they are All looking right. for. Uh, Mr. Mbao, quickly, do you think this issue would have been dealt with internally? 
internally as in in terms of not them protesting and obviously she said that uh, you know that the, they were they were told that it, it will be dealt with and they'll, they'll be given jobs and and their salaries you know a promise is not something that you should always consider at all times when you are promised you expect something to happen <coughs> 10 years of promises when is it going to happen all right they are leaving office now all right. And as soon as we come in as new PMMD, I believe things will change. All right, your time is up. Let's quickly get to our topic, lady and gentlemen. Uh, I just want us to briefly talk about that because that's what's happening on the ground and that's what's uh, affecting the citizens of Zambia. But quickly, our topic is our campaigns, you know, without rallies feasible. Mm -hmm. And my question uh, to you, Mr. Jimmy Chela from the UPND, has there been an equal level playing ground for all political parties in <coughs> regards to the electoral process? Uh, first and foremost, uh, who said that um, the direct answer to that question is that um, we cannot have an effective campaign without rallies in our setting as Zambia. We are limited in so many ways. We are limited in um, resources. We are limited in reaching out to our people. We are limited in uh, technology. Hence, the issue of rallies, even in the uh, United States, where people were dying in hundreds a day. They had the rallies. Where are we getting that reference? Thank God that that did not come to the referee of these campaigns. Who are the ECZ? The Electoral Commission of Zambia only discouraged. Discouraging is not stopping campaigns. So if it is the, the strategy for the patriotic front, a strategy which has been suggested by their... Their, their leader, President um, Edgar Lungu, if that is a workable strategy, let them go that way. Our strategy as the United Party for National Development, we are going to carry on with rallies. And it is unfortunate that uh, we as a nation are even tolerating such sentiments. We are slowly brooding and growing a dictator within ourselves. What we have been but, seeing... But Mr. Jimmy Chela, really, the, the reasons why, um, you know, the, the, the president did, uh, you know, uh, discourage rallies is the fact that COVID-19 is real and uh, there is need of social distancing. Wouldn't you agree with that? My brother, uh, just today, I was in Soweto Market. The congestion which is there, it's more than a rally. We go to churches. There are big churches like uh, the Blessing Center and other big churches where the... The, the number of people there, it's more than a thousand, which is, which is a rally on its own. And the churches, our churches are discouraged from operating. This is a political statement which is aimed at disadvantaging the opposition. PF, the day the PF president, President Edgar Chagwalungu, was uttering such a statement to discourage rallies, there was a multitude of people outside Mulungushi Conference Center. You see, this is very hypocritical and disappointing that uh, within a, a country that has been celebrated for upholding democratic values, we are allowing and, uh, 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 we are allowing and um, creating a fatal ground for a dictator to grow. We are not accepting that. President Edgar Lungu is just privileged to be in that position and is not going to, to dictate on how uh, processes which have been there for a long period of time. Do you, do you believe in COVID-19, Mr. Jimmy Chella? By the way, I'm a health personnel by profession, and I understand the transmission All right. of COVID-19 even better than those who are trying to discourage today. All right, your, your time is up, Mr. Jimmy Chella. Let me get to um, Kankumba Ward Councillor Aspirant, Tapera Joy. Uh, are campaigns without rallies feasible? And just realizing that your leader has, um, you know, discouraged rallies uh, from all, uh, you know, uh, political parties. Are, are these campaigns feasible, really, without rallies? Um, honestly, I think it's actually an advantage that we're not doing rallies. Because when we had rallies, <coughs> you gather people from everywhere, right? And then you address them together. You don't get to interact with this person. You don't get to know who your voter is. With this door-to-door -door campaign that we're being told to abide by, I, for one, have found as an advantage, because in my ward, 
When I go door to door, I get to know each and every individual on a personal level. Are you doing door to door as Patriotic Front? Yes. Well, we've, we've seen quite a lot of, uh, you know, number of gatherings in Kitwe. We had a gathering, uh, you had a gathering as, as Patriotic Front. We in also had a gathering just outside Mulungushi. Was that door to door? Um, for the gatherings we had outside Mulungushi, we made sure to abide by all COVID-19 rules. Everyone was masked up. We had sanitized and there was enough social distancing. Honestly, as a leader, I think it's very... Was, it, really, was there really social distancing, really? Madam Joy? Yes, oh. there was. And, there's, and you know, oh. this, that states a point on its own that rallies shouldn't be there because you can't control the masses of people. You can't control social distancing when you call about a rally. You can't control COVID-19 when, when you call for a rally. So as a leader, you can't subject your people to COVID-19. We know how grave COVID-19 is. And I would never subject my people to getting COVID as it is. It's real. It's there. So I'd rather protect my people so that I can actually have people to vote for me on 12th August than subject them to a disease just so that I can have a rally. So you still feel that, um, you know, uh, uh, that strategy of uh, banning rallies is, is, is going to play, uh, is going to put a fair playing ground for all political parties? It actually does because you get to speak your point to each and every person. I get to interact with each and every individual. I get to know a person for a person directly. Rallies just gather people. You don't even know who you're speaking to. Mm. One, one would say that you're just trying to utilize that strategy to benefit you as a political party. It's a fair playground. You can, it's door to door. No one has stopped you from going to someone else's house. No one has stopped the other parties from going to campaign door to door. It's a very fair playground because everyone has their own opportunity to add their views to this person. It gives you enough time to actually tell them what your party is about, what your vision is. So as a leader, I wouldn't advise... As a leader, I wouldn't let my people come together in rallies. I would rather protect them and we just do door-to-door -door campaigns. All right. Now, what should happen if we see Patriotic Front having rallies even after the president himself has discouraged? The president has discouraged rallies. He hasn't banned them. So now what should be done if... You as a political party that has discouraged, indeed uh, psychologically encouraging by bringing them together, together, what should be done? I think that should be a disciplinary issue because our leader said we shouldn't do rallies and we're supposed to obey that as his members, as his representatives. All right, your time is up. Thank you so much. I'll get back to you. <laughs> Let me quickly get to New Hope MMD, uh, Mr. Mbao Edward. Do campaigns, uh, brother, would, would campaigns really be feasible um, without rallies? The word feasible mm. has a meaning. And feasibility <coughs> in its own is very cardinal as you execute a certain plan. You know, feasibility has to do with easiness. It has to do with convenience. Is it convenient that we are actually having our campaigns as the opposition? The answer is no. There's no convenience. I want to talk about the issue, not the aspect of uh, the coronavirus. There is no way you can, you know, uh, subject people to so much vulnerability by visiting their homes. As you enter their homes, who, what guarantee do those people you are visiting <coughs> have to say you're not taking corona to them? If you talk about one-to-one, -one, <laughs> that even makes them more vulnerable to talk to them. To me, I would say it's just one way. It's, it's quite monotonous to me. Because when you look at um, the gatherings that have been going on, there are so many. You can't be preaching about, uh, a, you know, cor the, the, the coronavirus, you know, guidelines. As New Hope MMD, we are very adherent to the guidelines. That's why you will never find us having such gatherings. We don't have time for that because we respect whatever, you know, has been put up. Because we believe that, yes, we need to protect the, you know, the lives of the people. And even as we have been doing it, you know, we have a strategy called uh, Strategy Z Maninge, which we have been using as new Open MD. We have been on the ground for some time. We have been meeting people in different places in different ways, of which we have been so adherent, you know, to the, to the coronavirus guidelines. Now, going by the way our colleagues are putting it, they are saying, 
yes, the leader has said this, the leader has said that. Are they following what their leader is saying, is telling them? They are not. And how do they expect other people to follow what they are saying? They say things they can't do. And then when somebody else does it, they rise against such people. And they rise brutally, which is not supposed to be the case. So I've seen people being beaten for having just a small gathering of less than 50. And they're being beaten up. But there are gatherings which are masses. Look at the, the, the launches of the flyover bridges. How many people mm. have been gathering, mm. gathered there? Makeni, for instance. Mm. Did you see the gathering? How many people are in masks there? Mulungushi, how many people are in masks? In the Copper Belt in Kitwe, we are talking about an event that happened less than a week ago. How many were in masks? <coughs> and they were moving majestically. They were, there was no security there. All right, just, just quickly, as we, we all know that New Hope MMD has been, you know, uh, in, been in the elections for some time, and they, you've, you've won, and you've also come back in opposition. Uh, my, my question to you is, quickly, because your time is up, but my question to you is, how feasible is it, looking at the experience that you have as New Hope MMD, how feasible is it to have campaigns without rallies? My quickly. brother, my yeah. brother, I will talk about innovation. You know, when we talk about innovation, we are talking about something that is achievable, something that actually yields fruits. Look at it. You can never measure something that's going on the ground. Okay? For me to know how much I want to spend, I need to go on the ground. So meaning it is not feasible? It is not. All right, quickly, Mr. Jimmy uh, Chella, coming from the UPND, my question to you is, do you think the Public Order Act has been applied equally? Looking at the example of uh, the Socialist Party was, uh, was uh, launching its, its campaign in, in Kasama, and uh, after getting all the particular requirements that they needed, they were stopped to say you could not have this particular, you know, launch here, and yet they did have it virtually. Do you think the Public Order Act has been applied equally? You know, um, the direct answer to that is that no, the Public Orders Act has not been applied equally to everyone. What is there is that, um, you know, the Patriotic Front is just unfortunate. They behave as if they've never been in an opposition, and uh, they behave as if they are not going in an opposition in a few months time to come. They have taken hold and they are controlling the, 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 the police so much. Look at the, the contract for the uh, Inspector General of um, Police, uh, Kakoma Kanganja. This is a, a, a man whose contract is at the verge of being terminated. And he knows that once his contract is terminated, his life will become difficult bearing to the facts the economic hardships which we are facing. Kakoma Kanganja today is not operating as a free man, is not operating as a professional. He is part, he is a wing of the patriotic front. He's just being controlled, you see. Sometimes these How sure officers, are you that he is a wing of the patriotic front? What proof do you have? I, I don't have tangible proof, but I can prove that from the behavior. There's a certain behavior which we ex expect from a professional police officer. I'll give you an example. Uh, when uh, the UPND were launching um, our, our youth command center, our youth, we have our youth secretariat because the party has been growing at a faster rate. Our current secretariat couldn't accommodate everyone, so the youth decided to have our <coughs> own secretariat. We just called our president to come and grace the occasion. There was a lot of police officers in the riot gear. And they were claiming to, to say that we didn't get uh, the required um, uh, documentation to, to host that uh, event. Did Yet, you get the required the day, documentation? Yes, we had all the documentation, and there were political reasons which were given that on the same day, President Lungu of the Patriotic Front who was operating not in the capacity as head of state, but as in the capacity as a party president was receiving Chishimba Kambuili the man who has been castigating and insulting the patriotic front, the man who has given us so much revelation about how filthy the patriotic front has been, was being received by this party. You know, on that day, at that PF gathering, there was no police officer. But at our gathering, which had only 
executive leaders at national level. These are people who are just less than 100 people plus the president and his entourage. We had police in riotous gear. Is that proof enough that uh, you know, the inspector general is, is an extended hand? Is, is that the what the inspector general is the one who, who gives the orders to the police. Overall, is the, is, is the, is the chief of the, right. the, the police. Your time is up. We'll get back to you on, on that one, but maybe you can just finalize in, in, in 15 seconds. Yes. So yeah. what we are saying is this. Um, Zambia will continue. All we are asking for is that let these laws apply equally to everyone. Mm -hmm. No Zambian is he more privileged than the others. All right. Today, the Patriotic Front are in government because we voted them in. Now we are regretting we are going to vote them out. But let the playing ground be leveled. All right. Let me get to uh, the Kankumba aspirant, Ward Councillor aspirant, uh, Madam Joy Tapera. So the New Heritage Party and the Democratic Party have described police demands for political campaigns during this year's electoral process as an abuse of public order act. Do you agree? Um, I do not agree in, with that because the police only act, the police only respond to a situation when triggered. You can never get arrested for something you did not do or without proof. So for the police to come there and maybe the, for the way you said the Socialist Party event, for the police to say you do not have enough paperwork, it means they do not have enough paperwork. Because if they did have enough paperwork, they wouldn't have any power to stop the event. So I do not agree with that. Do, do you believe that the police is abusing the Public Order Act? No, because if they did abuse the Public Order Act, we would have seen it. They're just doing their job. We feel like they're abusing it because they're politically inclining their duty. But why is it that most of the times they would want to be strict with other political parties, but not be strict with your party that is in power? Because we're dealing with the, with the guidelines. We do, we do the right thing. You know what other parties will do? They will get into something, and then when it's not done properly, when they do the wrong thing and the police react, they'll say they're not being fair. But because us, we do the correct thing, we follow the guidelines, we get the correct paperwork, and the police don't come at our events to say they're favoring the, what, the ruling party. So it's just up, it's the decision they make. They choose not to adhere to the guidelines. They choose to do the wrong thing. So what do they expect? Well, they're saying they do have all the paperwork uh, for them to, to have the rallies. And this, is, this, is, this came through the spokesperson for Socialist Party. She said everything was there. They did have the proof. But the, the police did not give them any reason why uh, they, 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 didn't, they didn't give them a go-ahead to, to have the meeting. Okay, let me ask. Can, you be, can someone come and arrest you and not tell you why you're being arrested? For them to come and tell them that you can't have this event, it means they gave them a reason to shut it down. They just can't come shut it down and say, we're not going to tell you why we're shutting this down. All right. So you equally believe that the Public Order Act has been utilized fairly? Yes. All right. Um, all right. So what is your reaction to... You know, uh, the DP spokesperson who says that they will go full throttle to conduct various campaign activities without notifying the police as it is their constitutional right. What is your reaction to that? Um, according to the same constitution, mm. it says that if you're going to have probably a public gathering or yeah. a campaign, probably the planning on having rallies, you are supposed to inform the police. So you see... But then they're informing the police and they're not having the, the rallies. And then now they don't want to, inf how sure are we that they are informing the police in the first place? Because well, now they're saying that we won't inform the police, they'll go full throttle. And when the police go to stop them, they'll say, it's not fair. Well, all right. So whose fault is it at the end of the day? Uh, well, uh, if, if they're saying that they, they do have the evidence and they're, you know, they're saying with the uh, um, uh, ability to say they, they do have paperwork, then I'm pretty sure there must be something that is wrong there. What do you think is really wrong? Is it the police? Is it the uh, opposition uh, parties? Is it the, the process? What do you believe is wrong? If they truly have the paperwork, trust me, the police have no right to react. So for the police to react, it means they had a reason to do it. All right, let's get to um, New Hope MMD, Mr. Mbao Edward. Uh, what is your thought? Uh, is the Public Order Act being utilized fairly to all and each particular uh, you know, political party and aspirant leader who wants to have a rally or who wants to have a gathering? 
Okay. <clears throat> I believe to everything there are conditions and guidelines. Okay? There are requirements. In short, I'll use such words anyway <clears throat> for easy understanding. Um, for the opposition, because now the whole issue is affecting us, the opposition. They are not actually complaining because they are not sitting on that nail. Okay? Whenever you look at, I'll, I'll, I'll cite an example. If at one, I don't know if at one time you have been slapped by a, a, a child, a choka munyumba, they have money, huh? they have cash, eh? slaps you, you can't slap back. <laughs> You'll be scared. Can slap you three times, my dear. You just do this, continue doing that. And that's what we are doing at the opposition. We can't slap back whatever they are doing. They can say it because they, are not, they know that their father is there, protecting them in everything they are doing. We will look at the issue of requirements. Our own president was stopped when there were some by-elections, you know, in, a, in the eastern province. In the, in the eastern province? Yeah, should be in the eastern province last year. He was stopped <coughs> with valid documents. He was trapped. You are not proceeding. The issue of documentation has been presented by various opposition party leaders who have been trying to fulfill their, their obligations or programs. Physically and very transparent, these are the documents. They've always been speaking things we can never understand. <coughs> Look at this. When you talk about the Public Order Act, there is too much violation, I would say. Because if there isn't any kind of balance or fairness, there's some kind of unbiasedness there. Whenever the, the, I mean, the ruling party are having their gatherings, their, their meetings, no one is there to harass them. Before the opposition could conduct any particular program, or you will see a police officer there. Blocking your way. We have seen this even during the time of uh, nominations and the like. We've seen that. Okay? It's very physical. It's very, very, very transparent. So why should we get to a time where we need to start talking about the Public Order Act, which is not even trying like, to help us as the opposition? It's written, but they are not referring to it. Mm. Yes, the Public Order Act is there, but they are not referring to it as the ruling party. All right. So now <laughs> with, with what the DP spokesperson said, Ngonde uh, Ngonge, Nkonge rather, Justin, says the party will go full throttle to conduct various campaigns and various campaign activities without notifying the police as it is their constitutional right. What is your reaction to that? Okay, I, I, I wouldn't actually, you know, uh, protect or maybe cover somebody's uh, his words. Eh? That's, um, I believe it's the opposite. He has, he had reasons yeah. for him to say that. There are times when you feel you are so much pressed, so much pressed that you are now just forced to do what? Just to bust. Okay? And the way he busted by saying those words, getting to the ground, there is a reason why he said that. Because we have tried every particular way as the opposition. Would you agree as well, uh, coming from the opposition party? No, no, no. Of course, of that? course, of course, uh, you know, lawlessness is not tolerated by us. We believe in morality and integrity. We always follow what is stipulated in the laws of Zambia. And our president, that's why every time he moves, all right. Ever. All right. In now, a very required way. Trying it back to you, uh, Mr. Edward Mbawa, with the extent of where there is so much commercialized politics, mm. all right, is there a possibility of having issue based campaign coming this particular August? Okay, we believe that campaign, I mean, politics is business. Okay? Politics is business because you need to sell yourself. Mm. And for me to be known, I need to sell myself amicably. Feasibility study is carried out in order for you to understand how inevitable the ground is. You can't do business by going down, you know, full float down on the ground to check on how, what is happening. And by them speaking to say it is very feasible, yes, to them it is feasible because they are able to do that. But for us it's very hard. Look, resources that we are using, they are actually budgeted for. We can never boast over resources. We budget, we plan. And when you talk about door-to-door, -door, it's more expensive in the way they think it is. Yes, we can abide by the rules, but it's expensive for us to execute that. And we need definitely, of course, to have certain gatherings, mm. 
mm. for us to explain. So now, is it possible, as you're having those gather gatherings, is it possible to have issue-based campaigns with, its all, uh, uh, you know, with the commercialized politics that is happening on the ground? Is issue-based campaigns really tangible? Yeah, they are very tangible. They are very tangible. If they have been so tangible in the past, then they are tangible mm. now. <coughs> but it's, but uh, mm. it's just that, you see, um, we have been talking about this. I know sometimes it might seem as if we are just like, you know, it's a crybaby. We are not crybaby, you know, opposition parties. We are talking about something that is affecting us. 1991, the level was very fair. Very fair for campaigns. And as people campaigned, they could speak, they could do everything freely. And when the results came out, there was no noise because everyone was given a free fair ground to campaign. Today, because we are being closed up, I can't speak well, I can't do this and that. We can never say everything is fair. We need a very inevitable ground for us. Are you, are you giving out issue-based campaigns? Yes, we are. Very much. We are very much. We are a party that has changed people's lives. We are a party that has made the PF even to mushroom today. How, so how, we, how, how different are you from other posi op opposition parties? We've been there already. We have delivered before. We have changed this nation before. I last time talked about the national GDP of, of Zambia. It had risen. And the borrowing rate was really reduced. We found almost 10.8 billion US dollars. By the time we are leaving office, <coughs> it was less than a billion of debts being left. By the time these guys came, today we're talking about 48 plus billion US dollars, the borrowing rate today in Zambia. No plan of paying back. As New Hope MMD will come in to make sure that we rebuild Zambia. All right, you, your time is up. Thank you so much. Uh, Tapera Joy, the councillor coming from, aspirant, uh, aspiring councillor, by the way, coming from Kankumba uh, Ward from the Patriotic Front, Issue-based campaign, is it really feasible? Can it happen at the moment? Realizing that the Patriotic Front has been in the forefront, you know, releasing money, giving out money, commercializing politics. Is this really feasible on the ground? Um, yes, it is, because at the end of the day, we have to, um, at the end of the day, we have to be effective representatives for our people. Um, in as much as we are the ruling party, the 2021 manifesto is a pro poor manifesto which speaks also for my word. It directs its attention to rural areas, it directs its attention to undeveloped areas so that it can bring more development to those areas that have been neglected before. So it's very feasible and we have been doing that and we're still doing it. Why has your party commercialized politics? Um, I wouldn't say the party has commercialized politics because we are doing issue-based campaigns. It's just, <coughs> that's what politics is. We are reacting to politics the way it is. We haven't commercialized it. We are just being politicians. Mm. All right, we, we've, we've seen, we've seen uh, a number of, of, of videos uh, flaunting on social media with money's been flown here and there. Just recently, we saw a video of, of, of you know, uh, a car, white car, uh, People are claiming that it was, uh, you know, uh, Tutu Angulube, but we saw a, 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 a white car flaunting money to, 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 to the PF supporters. Mm. Uh, what, what, what's your reaction to that? Um, <clears throat> my reaction to that is it's not commercializing politics, mm. as one may put it, but that's a campaign. Not that throwing money is um, going to be encouraged, but that's what a campaign is. They were, probably it wasn't even Tutu Akulue in that car because you don't have any evidence that it was her. Probably we don't even know who was in that car. Was it, a PF, was it really a PF candidate? Was it really a PF member? So we can't say it's the patriotic front that was throwing the money. All right, so you, you would say that a UPND, uh, you know, a supporter would be throwing money to, to PF supporters. I haven't said a UPND supporter would yeah. throw money, but we're saying we don't know who was in that video. <coughs> so All we right. can't point fingers. So do you believe that your, your party has commercialized politics? No, it hasn't. Mm. And, <coughs> and, and what's the way forward for issue-based campaigns? Um, we'll continue with the way we've been doing it in the past. We won't really change the system. We'll just improve it. And that's how we'll go forward through this year's election.
Hmm. And, and you believe that uh, with, with all that you've promised, uh, realizing that, yes, you do have a manifesto and you've outlined things that you've done and things that you plan to do. You believe that uh, that will give uh, Zambians, uh, you know, uh, the, the particular heart to vote for you again as a party? Yes, they will, because the ground is green. Well, people are going to vote for the party that has brought them change, the party that has shown that they have worked. Has change really been brought in? I'm sure it's very visible. All right. All right, let's, your time is up. Thank you so much. Let's get to um, Mr. Jimmy Chella, coming from the UPND. Uh, let's look at the issue of having issue-based campaigns this particular period where we're going towards the elections on 12 August with the commercialized politics that we do have at hand. Uh, you, you know, the, the, the media in Zambia has tried to uh, create platforms through which um, uh, the citizens of Zambia can have a privilege of getting uh, issue-based uh, politics, issue-based debates. I remember um, the previous election, there was a, a debate which was staged by um, your station. Um, I think it should be at uh, uh, one of the hotels. Um, all the presidents were there, except that from the patriotic front. This is because they are not ready to debate issues. They are not ready to convince the Zambian people. This is why they don't even want to have rallies, because they don't have what to tell the Zambian people. There is nothing which they are going to say that, we have, uh, we, 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 that they can point at today that has changed the life of the Zambians. The roads they've been boasting all about, they've only benefited at them only benefited them. Look at the exaggerated prices of, of, of these roads and who are benefiting. Issue based are campaigns, Mr. Jimmy so, Chella. Wh wh what we are saying is that uh, there is no stage for issue based campaigns. We have, um, in this period, the, the COVID era, if we say that we don't want to have rallies, it is actually a good period for us to have issue based campaigns because we can use our public uh, broadcaster, ZNBC, to to bring forth, to give quality airtime mm. to politicians to air out their views because right. they are very limited touch with the, the, the people because of COVID-19. Now, is LNBC doing that? No. All we see is the PF with the songs. Uh, all we see is uh, our slogans we, which are not even talking about the issues which we are facing today. Today, uh, the Patriotic Front is not addressing as to how they are going to improve the provision of medicines in healthy uh, institutions. It is only, it is only the UPND President, Mr. Hagai Neichirema, who has been, who has been talking to the Zambians about issues, which, about issues on how they are going to transform this country. What, what issues are those? How, how are you going to transform this country? First and foremost, uh, I've been uh, saying this time and again, we have the four pillars. The first one, which is the, the very Quickly, you one, have 24 seconds. We have uh, prudent economic management. Prudent economic management, we are looking at uh, lowering the exchange rate, improving the cost of doing business in Zambia. Then we also have... How are you going to do that, Mr. Jimmy Chell? Uh, first and foremost, we are going to reduce taxes. Uh, by, by improving the, the quality of life for the Zambians. We the have time is up. I'm going to add 10 seconds. Please be brief. Uh, time is running. We, we need to end the program. First quickly. and foremost, when we reduce why the government today is getting huge sums of money from taxes, it's because very few people are employed. The UPND, when we come into power, we are going to employ more people and reduce the taxes All right. so that a lot of people can have access to income. Time has really run out, and my director is telling me that we have a minute uh, to, to end the program. But quickly, I'm going to give each of you a minute uh, to answer this particular question that I have for you, which is going to be your last question. <coughs> so my question is, um, with all this being discussed currently, are there indicators of having free and fair elections? And what should be done to have a level playing ground to have campaigns for all in each particular political party, for everyone to have a very fair... <laughs> <Can I start? laughs>
<laughs> okay. All right. Let's. Uh, yeah. Please. Yeah, quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Under yeah, a minute. Yeah, yeah. 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 Look. Um, yeah. The, the throwing around of money and whatever. It's a sign that people are not popular on the ground. The PF has failed to sell. Yes, they can point at a few things they've done here, there, mm -hmm. which were our plans as new OPMD. MMD. Those were our plans and they are building from them. Okay? And now, when you look at the way they've been doing things, in their own places or their own, uh, you know, constituencies, as members of parliament, most of them are very unpopular. I remember I watched somebody, sorry, I can't mention the name, in the Copper Belt, walked to a house and then this lady asked that why they shman about mp so this mp was standing next there but free and fair elections everywhere around if free and fair elections can never be considered in zambia with the current environment all right, right what now. should be done to have what needs a to be done at the moment <clears throat> is to allow you know other political parties to conduct rallies which are favorable we have the guidelines on how to do things. If people are to mask up, let them mask up. Come and then let them be addressed. All right. That would be a fair ground for us to do anything that we need to do. And even Thank when we have so got much. documentation, All right. let them Quickly, stop uh, stopping us Joy, from conducting rights. Tapura Joy, uh, are there really indicators of having free and fair elections? And what should be done to have a fair playing ground for campaigns? Um, yes, there are indicators of having free and fair elections. The way everyone keeps saying that the Patriotic Front has banned rallies. They haven't banned rallies. They have discouraged rallies for their party. Because with the COVID-19 that is happening right now, it is the only right thing to do. So other parties, yes, you can have rallies, but abide by COVID-19 rules. And that is impossible for one to have a rally and abide by COVID-19 rules. Because you're going to call so many people, you don't even know how many they'll be there. And you can't tell me you managed to control each and every person there at social distance. Free and fair elections? <laughs> so for us to have free and fair elections, they are there. Rallies are going to happen. People are going to campaign. But the Patriotic Front has encouraged us to abide by COVID-19 guidelines. Mr. Jimmy Chela, speech. UPND IPS National Youth uh, Committee, what is your thought on the question that I've asked? Uh, we, we may not have a free and fair election. Thank God the Zambian people are decided, and they are decided that we are going to change government. UPND is going to take over, and we are going to work diligently to improve the welfare and to take back the sanity in the affairs of governance. Um, free and fair elections. Campaigns, are they going to be, uh, well, what, what should be done to Today, have a... The, the, the patriotic front are, are having rallies, they are campaigning, and they want to be the referees uh, for, for the elections. We are going to have audience. We have started uh, having uh, engaging ECZ on how we can uh, protect um, our electorates All right. against uh, COVID. And we are not going to talk to any party president. We are not going to go to Dr. Nevers Mumba right. or to uh, President Ed Galungu Thank for negotiations. So we know where to go. Time is up. Thank you so much. I really want to appreciate all the three of you for coming through to Blunt Talk, the fearless debate. Thank you so Thank much. You all right. Our topic was, are campaigns without rallies feasible? And uh, my guests were Mbao Edward, the MMD Lusaka District IPS. We also did, did have uh, Tapera Joy, who is the Kankumba Ward Councillor in Rufunsa, for coming from the Patriotic Front. And we also did have Jimmy Chela, UPND National Youth IPS. My name is Chisha Chola. I have been your moderator. This is Blunt Talk, the fearless debate. We are back next week at 20 hours on on Monday, thank you so much for watching. Thank you. You're welcome. Though you ate my time. <laughs>
2021 is an event-packed year, with the August 12th general elections being the pinnacle of what to look out for. Luckily, you don't have to be left behind. Get a movie TV decoder from a paypoint near you. In Northwestern Province, Solwezi, Jacob Lugula, on 0966-845-089. Mwinilunga, Innocent, on 0969-582-227. In Chavuma, Claudius Kaumba, 0968-876-670. In Mufumbwe, Gift Kashale, 0967-615-017. In Ruapula Province, Kalasa Matthews in Imanza, 